Accept Islam, read Quran, and Allah will save you in this world and hereafter. Islam is the last of the heavenly religions and the Quran is the last of the heavenly books. Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is the last of the prophets and messengers. Allah commanded him to convey this religion to all of mankind. This Quran has been revealed to me that I may therewith warn you and whomsoever it may reach. The evidence for the validity of Islam and the truthfulness of the prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, is abundant and can hardly be enumerated. This evidence is sufficient to convince Muslims are so convinced that Islam is the true religion. They are so proud of it, that they do daqwa to convince non-believers to convert to Islam. They hoped that Allah would bless them with heavenly rewards if they successfully converted infidels to Islam. But there is one thing Muslims hide from the infidels, and that is their future in the hereafter. The Muslims felt uncertain about it, since Allah in Quran actually guarantees all Muslims will go to hell. What? What hell are you talking about? Allah never guarantees us hell, you lying kuffar. According to Quran, Surah Maryam, verse 66 to 71, all Muslims will go to hell. And man says, when I have died, am I going to be brought forth alive? Does man not remember that we created him before, while he was nothing? So by your Lord, we will surely gather them and the devils, then we will bring them to be present around hell upon their knees. Then we will surely extract from every sect those of them who were worst against the most merciful in insolence. Then, surely it is we who are most knowing of those most worthy of burning therein. And there is none of you except he will come to it. This is upon your Lord an inevitability decreed. These verses implies that Allah talks to three groups. 1. Unbelieving man enters hell and remains there. 2. Devils, or jinns, will also be brought down to hell. 3. Muslims, too, will enter hell, and this is clearly mentioned in verse 71. When Prophet Muhammad's companions heard about this verse, they were anxious and scared. The following stories are taken from Tafsir of Quran, Surah Maryam, verse 71, by Ibn Kathir and Tabari. Abu Sumaya said, We differed about the meaning of passing through it or wary duha. For some of us said that no Muslim will enter hell, and others said all people shall enter it, and then Allah will save those who have done righteousness. Then Jabir ibn Abdullah came to meet him. Ibn Abdullah, we have different opinions about the meaning of pass through it in Quran, Surah Maryam, verse 71. What do you think about it? Oh, the meaning is everyone shall enter hell. <gasps> Jabir ibn Abdullah have fought in 19 major battles with Prophet Muhammad and was a trusted Sahabi. Notice that even he was sure that he would go to hell. Abdullah ibn Ra'aha placed his head on his wife's lap and began to weep, so his wife began to weep also. Why are you weeping? I saw you weeping, so I started to weep. I remembered the saying of Allah, who is glorified and exalted, Surah Maryam, verse 71. Not one of you but will go down to it, and I don't know if I will be saved from it or not. Abdullah ibn Ra'aha was one of the Muslim commanders who died in the Battle of Mut'a, together with Zaid ibn Harida, the ex-adopted son of Prophet Muhammad. You see that, even a Sahaba and a martyr like ibn Ra'aha, felt very uncertain about his afterlife. Ugh. Narrated by Ibn Ishaq who said, Whenever Abu Maysara would lie down on his bed he would say, oh. I wish my mother had never bore me. And then he would begin to weep. When asked why he was weeping he would respond, We were told that we would enter hell, but we weren't told that we would exit from it. Abu Maysara was Prophet Muhammad's companion who lived in Medina. He was anxious about his life after death after he found out that he would go to hell.
Narrated by Mujahid who said, I was in the company of Ibn Abbas when a man called Abu Rashid, who is also known as Nafi al-Azraq, came and asked Ibn Abbas. Have you seen the saying of Allah in Surah Maryam, verse 71, Not one of you, but will pass through or waridu ha hell. This is, with thy Lord, a decree which must be accomplished. As for you and I, O Abu Rashid, we shall enter hell, but let us see whether we shall exit from hell or not. <gasps> Abdullah ibn Abbas was Prophet Muhammad's cousin. He is considered to be the greatest Mufassir of the Quran, but even he believed that he and the rest of Muslims will enter hell and he was not sure whether he could exit from hell or not. Ibn Abbas said regarding Surah Maryam, verse 71, Not one of you but will pass through Waridu ha it means that the righteous and the sinner shall enter hell. For don't you hear what Allah said to Pharaoh, Surah Hud, verse 98. He will go before his people on the day of judgment, and led them Arada whom into the fire, and also the verse in Surah Maryam, verse 86. And we shall drive the sinners to hell being lead weirdan? So he called, passing through, weird and entry into hell and not an exit out of it. In this hadith, Ibn Abbas re-emphasized his understanding that all Muslims, the righteous and the sinner, will enter hell. Based on those information, we know that the companions of Prophet Muhammad were very scared and felt uncertain about their life after death. Many of them were Muslims who did jihad together with Prophet Muhammad. If the Prophet's die-hard companions felt so uneasy and uncertain about their life after death, let alone most regular Muslims. So, all Muslims will be herded to hell, and that is Allah's decision for them. We did Salat five times a day, paid Zakat, did the Hajj, fasting, and all we got at the end is hellfire. That's not fair at all. To ease their fears, some Muslim scholars created a story that there would be a bridge above hell where Muslims would walk over it. The bridge over hell is like the sharp edge of a sword. The first group to cross it will pass like a flash of lightning, the second group will pass like the wind. The third group will pass like the fastest horse. The fourth group will pass like the fastest cow. Then, the rest will pass while the angels will be saying, O oh Allah, save them, save them. Unfortunately, Quran never mentions about the bridge at all. So, information about the bridge is nothing but Muslim's wild fantasy, created by fear of Allah's promises of hellfire in Quran. But, there is still hope for the Muslims to go to heaven, since Allah said that he will promise to save some pious Muslims from hell, in Surah Maryam, verse 72. Then, we will save those who feared Allah, and leave the wrongdoers within it, on their knees. Pay attention that in this verse, Muslims who feared Allah and Muslims who are wrongdoers are both in hell. Then Allah will save those Muslims who feared Allah from hell. How does Allah decide which Muslims go to heaven and which ones stay in hell? Quran, Surah al qariya verse 6 to 11 answers that question. Then as for him whose balance of good deeds will be heavy, he will live a pleasant life in paradise. But as for him whose balance of good deeds will be light, he will have his home in Hawiya, hell. And what will make you know what it is? It is a hot blazing fire. It is difficult to know for sure how much is the weight of a certain good or bad deed since there is no specific explanation about it in Quran. It's true. For instance, how much is the penalty for missing a prayer, or how much is the baraka for doing zikir, sunnah prayer, or tearaway prayer? Allahu Alam. Nobody knows for sure, only Allah knows. Yeah, we can only guess. 
but now we are here and not sure when will we be saved. But where is Prophet Muhammad? He's supposed to give us some intercession, right? After all, that is the reason why we pray five times a day for his salvation. Yes, where is he? I was promised that if I said salawat for him once, then Allah will bless me ten times, delete ten mistakes, and raised me ten degrees. I heard that my salawat for him would make Allah erased my sin at that day. But in Quran, Allah never promises that Prophet Muhammad will intercede Muslims in the afterlife to save them from hellfire. Instead, Allah said in Quran, Surah Az-Zumr, verse 19 that Prophet Muhammad cannot save anyone from hell. Is he on whom the word of doom is fulfilled to be helped, and canst thou, O Muhammad, rescue him who is in the fire? Remember that Prophet Muhammad couldn't save his mother and father from hell fire, let alone save mere Muslims who were not related to him. Well, I told Muslims in Quran, Surah al arkan verse 9, that I don't know what will happen to me and them, in the afterlife. Say, O Muhammad, I am not the first messenger of Allah, nor do I know what will be done with me or with you. I only follow what was revealed to me, and I am but a plain mourner. Are we on our own here? When will Allah take us out from here? What's wrong with the Prophet? You see, folks, the Prophet's companions were so certain that Islam was the true religion, but they were not certain about their life after death. Just like them, Muslims nowadays also are very scared of dying, very anxious about being burned in hell, and not sure whether or not they can come out of hell. We will come out, while you will stay there forever. Okay. How can Islam be a true religion if it cannot save Muslims from hell fire? How dare you! You are fuel of hell. Allah leads you astray to hell forever.